To take you further, we examine gun rights in America, and joining us now from San Diego is Sean Van Diver. He's a frequent writer in U.S. newspapers and a co-director at the Truman National Security Project. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thanks so much, Elaine. Sean, you, uh, you know, we've heard the same conversation over and over again. You just heard the president talk about easy access to guns in this country. Is it really about easy access? It is much easier here than in most other countries. Well, absolutely. I mean, access is an issue. Um, but, you know, America, our, our Constitution gives us the right to bear arms. And I think that's important. That's important that we, that we keep that. But I would also say it's important that my son's able to go to school and, and come home in one piece without any holes in him, and that our, that our families are going to be safe when, when they're out in public. And, and the way that we do that is not through throwing our hands up and saying, oh, another one, and, or, oh, you know, this happened again. It's because they're mentally unstable. This isn't, this isn't about mental illness. It is the Charleston incident is very much about race in America and the symptom. Is, is the gun violence. And I think that the way that we kind of address that is through smart, principled regulation. And that doesn't mean taking away guns from anybody. It doesn't mean that, that uh, we overtax ammo and we say that you know, each round is going to cost $5 extra for, for taxes. No, it means that we require some training. You know, as a, when I was in the Navy, I was, uh, I was required to get at least two weeks of training before I even looked at a, a weapon. And, uh, and I think, so I think probably the, the happy place is 40 hours of training for a, uh, for a gun owner and then 80 hours of training if you want a concealed carry. So you okay. can effectively employ your weapon without hurting those around you. I want to ask you more about that in just a minute. But, um, you know, Sean, most countries around the world look at what keeps happening in the United States. It's love for guns, the culture of violence here. And they, you know, they just can't comprehend it. And every time they shake their heads in disbelief um, that it continues. It's likely that there are more Americans that have killed each other over the years than terrorists or foreigners killing Americans. So what would you say to our international audience? It, it's not likely. It's, it's a fact. More, more Americans are killed every year than, than any of my, my fellow brethren uh, fell in Iraq or Afghanistan. I mean, we, we're killing each other in, in record numbers here, and it's, and it's absurd. And I would say that you're right. It, it's, it's not changing. And the only way that it changes is if we engage with our lawmakers and we engage with our communities and we demand change. And, uh, and I, think that, I think it's time. It's, it's time to stop the stale conversation of, of, oh, outrage. A bunch of kids were killed. Let's be outraged for a week and then forget about it. No, we have to, we have to remember and we have to remember this feeling. We have to go out and be uncomfortable and have these conversations about race and about, and about gun violence in America. I want to ask you more about laws. There are reports that the suspect in the South Carolina case, Dylan Roof, obtained the gun uh, used in the shooting legally. The current law and the one that was proposed after that Newtown massacre where all those young children died would not have prevented what happened in South Carolina from happening. So um, elaborate a little bit more about what the possible answer is. I mean, can you see a day where lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, can agree to do something more. Absolutely, and I think that comes from constituents speaking out. You know, the NRA has been staunchly against background checks and mental health screening, despite 92% of their members wanting them to do something. We can't get 92% of anybody to want to do anything in this country. And that we have 92% of America who, uh, of NRA members who want background checks, and yet the NRA absolutely refuses to go after it, that says a lot about their organization. Um, so I think the answer is, on one hand, background checks um, and mental health screenings. Uh, and I think that that needs to be a recurring thing. It doesn't need to just happen once. Um, you can be 18 years old and go buy a gun, and then something traumatic can happen to you, or something you, you're, you can come down with some sort of mental illness when you're 25 and nobody's looking at you. And then when you're 45, that's when you break. So. What I would recommend is a five-year cycle of mental health screenings and background checks, along with that training that we had talked about, the, the 40 hours for gun ownership and 80 hours for um, concealed carry permits, and all of which would be on the five-year cycle. And I think that would solve a lot of our issues. It wouldn't, it's not a silver bullet. It's just one layer of what I think, that, um, I think one of the answers is to this. But, but let's not confuse this and say that that's going to solve these, these, this violence happening, happening to to minorities and people of color all across the nation. We have to have an uncomfortable conversation about race 
And, and when you're uncomfortable, that's when you grow. And I would encourage all of your viewers and, and everybody in America to go out and get into your community and be uncomfortable. Have those uncomfortable conversations. That's how we're going to solve this, not through, not through more laws and regulations. We have to care about it. We Do you think some of the, what you're suggesting as far as background checks and, and more training would deter some people from getting their hands on weapons or just make it harder for them to keep a weapon? Absolutely would. And you know, here in California, we, we just passed a law that, uh, that allows a family member to call if you've been making threats against yourself or somebody else. And we have what's called a gun violence restraining order, and that that works. And if you if family members were to abuse it, they would uh, they would be punished under the law. Um, you know, all of these things, this patchwork of, of regulation, doesn't violate the Constitution. Uh, you know, the the proposal that I had submitted earlier with the background checks and the training, uh, it, that sounds like an awfully well regulated militia, and that's what the Second Amendment says. All right, Sean Van Diver, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.